I'm wearing a hat. I'm holding a microphone. This is going to be a different video. I got COVID. Second time. It sucks. So I'm here in my room by myself. Food's being delivered to the door. I'm okay. Don't worry about me, but I am bored. And you know what? My clarinet probably already has COVID inside it, but I still don't want to play it. I feel okay, but I'm not going to be playing clarinet for a couple of days. That doesn't mean I'm not interested in the clarinet. That doesn't mean I don't want to get better at the clarinet. So what do I do? What should you do? Not when you get COVID, but let's say you got the flu, you got a cold, or your clarinet's and you've gone to visit your grandparents or whatever. Your wife's mad at you. You can't play the clarinet. How do you grow as a clarinet player? And that was what I was faced with today. And uh, I went down on a deep dive on our friend YouTube here. And uh, I found some videos and I was shocked at how infrequently some of them had been viewed. And I wanted to share them with you because this is the process. I went and I listened. I heard some new things. I heard some stuff that I really liked, some stuff that I never heard before. I had some new thoughts and I wanted to share all those things with you, but mostly the process of how to have a different experience, uh, how to hear the clarinet differently than you did before. The first thing we're going to hear is Robert Marcellus, principal of the Cleveland Orchestra, playing the W.C. Rhapsody in 1969. And this has been viewed 482 times. It's been up since 2020. So not that long, but come on, please. Marcellus playing the W.C. Rhapsody. We should be checking this out. Let's check it out now. And by the way, I put these all on a playlist. I'm going to put them in the description so you can, I'm going to talk over these for two reasons. One, I like to talk. Second of all, I also want to try and avoid a copyright claim or even worse than that, God forbid, a copyright strike. So I'm going to try and make it so that I'm not just playing the videos. I'm trying to add value to them. But don't worry, you can check them all out on a playlist in case my talking irritates you and you wouldn't be wrong if it did. Okay. All right, so uh, we're just going to sort of drop the needle on these, hear little bits of them. We're tuning. Screw that, we don't need to hear tuning. Here we go. he take the breath? Let's find out. I don't think he did. Well done. That's why he's Robert Marcellus. beautiful here to hear like that focus sound floating like that. I mean like it's a it's maybe a smaller sound than we're used to today. But it floats so nicely. Kind of very even the way he plays it. It's too good. It's too good. But we got a lot to get through, so let's uh, not get too bogged down in the beauty of that. It would be easy to do. Next up, we have Robert Marcellus playing the Mozart clarinet concerto, which we've heard before. I know it. We've heard it before. We've heard it on my channel before. Uh, but this is a little different. This is a live recording from 1973, I think. Yes, this was put up in 2020, and it's been uh, viewed... 1,144 times. And from sort of the center of the American clarinet universe, I don't think that's enough times. So I want to encourage everyone to check this out. Let's just listen to a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
There you go. I mean, that really proves his recording from the 60s was not not a joke, right? That was the real thing. It's the same man playing the same piece, but it's a few years later and slightly different. And that gives us something interesting to listen to. Uh, it's definitely wonderful to hear such elegant playing. It's really good to hear the beginning of the sound that we know today and that we base brighter, darker, all that stuff. Eh, I can go on forever. I won't. I won't. I promise. Here we go. What's next? Next up, we have Robert Marcellus playing Dances of Kalanta in 1969. Uh, you know, again, this is a way we can really hear uh, this sound in the context of an orchestra. What strikes me is what I've heard mostly is him playing Brahms symphonies. That's mostly what I've, I've heard uh, of his orchestral output. Uh, I hadn't heard this, and maybe that's I'm remiss in that, but this, this was a revelation to me today in my COVID uh, quarantine to get a chance to check this out, and I wanted to share it with you. Certainly a lot more to listen to there, and you should. Again, it's linked in, down in the description. Check out this playlist. It's worth it. Um, really amazing to hear the... I mean, he's pumping some sound out there. Uh, it is a nice reminder to not go off of that high E-flat too early. Otherwise, you will get buried by the orchestra. Um, but again, I don't really mean that as a criticism. He should have waited a little longer. Whatever. Uh, but my point is this. He's pumping sound out. This is my point. He's pumping sound out, but his sound does not get unfocused. He never plays louder than he can with that focus of sound. And that's something to really pay attention to and something to listen to. And so it's something to value in our own playing. Whatever tone quality we are making, we've got to make sure that our volume never exceeds our ability to make that tone. And that's something that we can get we can get lost. I mean, because... Uh, Sometimes, ah, more, more, more. Or sometimes it's easy to get excited and want to be heard. But we've got to keep our ear on that focus and on that sound, and on that prize. Because it sounds so good when you do, right? Okay, what's next? Well, what's next is Harold Wright playing Dances of Galanta in 1979. Now, we're going to hear a little bit different version of a clarinet sound here. I mean, it's a little bit later in time. And a different player playing in a... In a slightly different way. This was put up in 2019, has about 7,000 views. More views than any of my videos have, but still not enough for this. Come on, let's check it out. It's nice to hold that E flat a little bit longer, let the orchestra dissipate. Whew, nice. 
Nice. I'm stopping there so you can hear the rest of it on your own without me chit-chatting. Uh, excellent. So really uh, terrific, terrific play. This next one, let me see how many views it has. It was put up in 2022, so it's not old, but it's only got 324 views. And this might be one of the most freakish things I've ever heard in my life. So what this is a recording of is, uh, I don't really know what it's for, but I know who it is. It's Ricardo Morales standing in his living room, uh, wearing a nice shirt, playing the crap out of uh, one of those homages that Bella Kovacs wrote, the Strauss. So uh, let's just check it out a little bit because, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you watch it and you think, you know, okay, yeah, it's on Zoom. It's not synced up. It's not a lot of things, but what it is, it's kind of ridiculous. Okay, so you're kidding me with that, right? I mean, we don't even know that he's wearing shoes. Uh, one of the, the miracles of the pandemic, I think. Uh, you know, uh, and ironically, I had to get COVID to hear that. Uh, anyway, so check that out. I mean, it 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 really is very very fine uh, playing, and we can hear. I mean, to me, at least I think I can hear the the combination of Marcellus and Harold Wright in that sound. Right. I mean, it's 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 got the ring. It's got the roundness. It's got all of it. It's got the evenness. It's oh, I mean, it's really something. And to have that sort of effortless technique put on top of it. Whew, check it out. <laughs> it's fun to hear. Uh, it made my COVID quarantine a little nicer today. And I get to try and do that myself when I get my clarinet back out and I clean it up. I wanted to pass that along. Here we have a live recording of Harold Wright playing the introduction theme and variations by Rossini. 1970. Um, this has been viewed 10,000 times. So this is, yeah, we don't, we don't need to support this one quite so much, but we still could because check it out. I'm just going to like play a couple spots because it's a long piece and we've been here a long time. Thanks for sticking with me. Like and subscribe if you would. Okay. Um, boom. We'll just check it out here. I don't know where that is. That's like really clean, really round. Oof, the throat don't sound good. Really even with that double lithometer. Let's drop it somewhere else and see what we can get here. <laughs> I mean, like everything is played like a phrase. The technical spots aren't just notes, they're phrases, they're gestures. It's amazing. It's so appropriate. How would you say? Darn good, I think. All right, uh, what do we have? Let's do one more. This is a weird one because he doesn't actually play the clarinet. But Harold Wright has been interviewed on the radio. We will just flip around in this interview a little bit. But the first thing that this interviewer said kind of really caught me because it was, I was already thinking about making this video and he said something that I think is really true. Like, uh, we forget sometimes what resources we have right at our fingertips because they are so always right there at our fingertips. And uh, today was a reminder for me that this platform that I spent a lot of time on has more resources than I even knew. And uh, and I wanted to share that what seems like an obvious revelation because I think that there's there's always more 
that we can find in the world, particularly with the internet, of resources that can give us new thoughts, give us new ideas, uh, allow us to have new thoughts about the planet without having the planet in our hands. It's a special thing. So with that in mind, let's just check a few of these words out and we'll say goodbye. Uh, thanks for being here. Like and subscribe. He hear this first thing though. Don't go away yet. It's pretty easy to take what we have for granted. Yes. But step back for a second and think how lucky we are to have an orchestra of this caliber in Boston. Yeah, in okay. Boston Symphony Hall. I'm not Hall, in Boston, but I, I get it. Berkshire is at Tanglewood. You must admit that we must be the virtuoso of the clarinet. You don't so much listen to him as overhear him as he steals sound from silence. Well, I like that idea. Drawing us into a volatile private world of thought, feeling, and dream. A volatile world. Yeah, the musician's nice. buzzword for all this is breath control. The complete ability to control pitch, volume, and tone color on the instrument. And Harold Wright shows this ability on a single note. I love his response. I asked him about it. Well, Brian, I hate to tell you this, but on clarinet, it's it's on, on most notes, not all notes, it's it's not a hard thing to do. Ha! <laughs> Yes, sir. Oh, you do have to have some control to do yeah. do do it well. Sure, but mm -hmm. it's something in the nature of the instrument to be able to start from nothing. Easy for you to say, Harold. Right? Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to play with, with an attack, and and do what you said. Uh, I've never and heard so Harold Wright's voice before today. To wear that out within ten years or so. See, so you shave it. With, yeah. with a knife. Yes, you have to. Uh, it's funny. This is it like the, a bit more. You know, him talking to people uh, that so don't know it, about the clarinet. It does respond, and it uh, it's less effort than you can play softer on it. But the instruments I use the same. There's, uh -huh. there's not uh, there's not a, an, ex, an exchange. Anyway, so there there is some more stuff on that list that I, I didn't show you here. So there's some surprises if you go check out this uh, this playlist. Hope you like it. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for staying with me uh, while I had COVID. I wanted to make some, some videos and I'm disappointed that I didn't get to do so. So this is it.